Hi, I want to do um, this video. Um, uh, the title is going to be um, How the Devil Deceived the World. And uh, I'm going to bring out two scriptures. Um, as you know, when, when you look at the New Testament, um, uh, Jesus, uh, real name Yahweh he <clears throat> he uses the word devil um, in you know a few occasions, um, and uh, also Satan, um, and in some cases maybe using it slightly interchangeably. So uh, if you look at um, his engagement with Peter in one instance, he says. Uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, now is he saying that Peter's Satan? Um, um, he's indicating that the spirit of Satan had jumped on him, or the spirit, you know, of the devil. Um, he he calls uh, Judas uh, uh, a devil uh, in, in one scripture. And... Um, if, if you look at the usage of the word devil in the New Testament, which the original language was Greek, the definition is deceiver, uh, someone who deceives. So a lot of people have this impression that the devil is, you know, uh, a spiritual being. Uh, an angel, fallen angel, and that's uh, not necessarily the case. The devil can be a person, um, and it could be um, a person that lies, cheats, steals, etc. And the same thing with Satan. So if you look at the definition of Satan in the New Testament, you know, while we know, you know, from our understanding that Satan is an actual angel, um, but Satan can also be um, defined as um, a person who is acting in the spirit of Satan. Um, and again, you know, if you look in the definition in the New Testament, um, it, it talks about, you know, again, a person acting like Satan is one of the definitions. So uh, I recommend doing a search for devil, looking at all the usages of the word and the definitions. Um, and again, the Blue Letter Bible is a good uh, vehicle to do that and uh, also look at Satan and look at the usages and the definitions uh, especially in the New Testament so uh, getting back to um, this particular lesson I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 I'm going to start in verse 15 and read through 21 now this these this scripture here is specifically talking about the false image of Jesus real name Yahweh Shai that has been pushed since um, the beginning of the Renaissance and um, as you know brought out my other lessons um, Jesus real name Yahweh Shai was a dark-skinned Negro uh, person uh, based on the description in Revelations 1 and Daniel 10 um, and the other definitions of how uh, the Jews of the tribe of Judah looked um, consistently uh, as well, you know, as well as archaeological facts uh, that you could see on the walls in Egypt um, and other artifacts that throughout time that document these people. Uh, they, they were a dark skin, well, different shades of brown, but uh, the tribe of Judah in, in large or in 
most cases were uh, probably more darker skinned than perhaps the rest of the tribes. But, um, and then we know in 14th century, uh, 15th century, uh, the um, Caucasian image was put up and has been portrayed uh, in books and movies and Bibles and, you know, since that time. And it's a false image. So this passage is about Pope Alexander VI, uh, whose son, Cesare Bogier, was the basis of the false image so um, so for and so what this Pope did when his son died he basically you know commissioned the painting of his son and had his son set up as the son of God okay uh, for a father afflicted with untimely mourning he hath made an image of his child soon taken away now honor him as a god which has then a which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices thus in the presence of an ungodly custom grown stranger was kept as a law and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings, whom men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far and made an ex express image of a king whom they honored to the end that by this their forwardness, they might flatter him that was absent, as if he was present, were present. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help set forward the ignorant to more superstition. For he, preadventure, willingly to please one in authority, force all skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And this, excuse me, and so the multitude allured by the grace of the work took him now for a God, which a, which a little before was but honored as a man. And this was an occasion to deceive the world, deceive the world, okay, for men serving either calamity or tyranny did subscribe unto stones and stocks and incommunicate, incommunicable name. Okay, so it talks about deceiving, right, uh, basically deceiving the world. Okay, and then we're going to jump to Revelations. We're going to go to chapter 20. Uh, just to bring out this precept. Revelations chapter 20. And we're going to go to uh, verse 3. Okay, and this talks about, again, you know, the... Um, the Renaissance, basically after the Dark Ages, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Okay, and that little season is you know, following the Renaissance, okay? And so um, it talks about, you know, through the Renaissance um, uh, that the devil, Satan and the devil will be, will be bound a thousand years. And actually, let's see, 
actually, if you look at verse, actually the first verse, uh, we, let's read that. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. Okay. And then that brings you into verse three that I read. So, um, so basically, you know, that talks to, um, Yahweh basically coming down and, uh, effectively bounding the devil. And so how, you know, how that, you know, all started was when he came down, uh, when he was born and lived, um, you know, he got the gospel going. And when the gospel started being spread, basically it started the, um, the end of the Greco-Roman um, empire. Okay, and then if you look at history, um, the Greco-Roman empire transitioned into the Holy Roman Empire. Now, you know, there was issues with the Holy Roman Empire, but uh, that's a, a different topic, but, but that start of the Holy Roman Empire going through the Dark Ages. Basically, Satan and the devil was bound for a thousand years uh, where uh, the Greco-Romans were out of rulership for roughly a thousand years. And then they came back in the Renaissance and um, started, again, deceiving the world with the image. So... Um, so that's, that's it on that topic. Um, leave me a message if uh, you have questions.